Hi, welcome everybody. This is Artist Talk on Art. Um, this is our 25th vir Monday virtual open studio. This has been our wow. sort of reaction to the COVID crisis and not being able to meet and be together. Um, but we come together through our Zoom meetings every Monday. Um, and what makes this work is you, the artist, the artist talking about your art. I think we've had a, a great format going. Um, and we've had some many regulars and many new faces. The ATOA, the Artist Talk on Art, is a 501c3. It's been around for 45 years. One of the founders, Doug Shear, is here tonight, and he's still a member of our board and a very active member. And the Artist Talk on Art has a long history, um, maybe one of the first groups to certainly make an impact in bringing artists together to talk of course, now that's somewhat commonplace, but we're still around and we are the longest running artist dialogue in the United States. Wow. The format we do here, well, let me tell you our old format. Our old format was very much planned out talks and dialogues. There'd be a panel and they would present on a topic and everything would be sort of worked out ahead of time. On the other hand, what we do here is we go from artist to artist and not all the artists, obviously, but we go through a few of the artists who'd like to present. And in a very casual way, they present and talk about their art, either through screen sharing or holding an image up to the screen, um, literally, or walking around their studio um, and showing the work. Um, on the other hand, we are looking to make some changes. Every once in a while, we do have a focus presentation where I invite an exhibition that's going on to present. And starting the beginning of the year, we're gonna make that regular every first Monday of the month. And so that'll be a time where we will have a planned panel, a planned discussion. And we may take something uh, that we found very interesting that Michael Krasowitz does. And you know, when you like an artist really well, you steal his idea. And so we're gonna engage Michael's idea of bringing up a topic and letting everyone discuss that topic and that'll be the heart of a presentation. For now, what we're doing is sort of artists come on and they present. The goal is to engage dialogue, to have responses, and it's not really a presentation and if people respond at the end. Feel free to respond as you go along. Just be aware that when you do speak, it activates a lot of people's cameras and so you become the center of attention. Feel free to mute yourself if you want to uh, strictly listen and if the children or the dog is in the background, things like that. We'll run into te technical difficulties. We always get through them. There are never really any problems. This is a very safe and open space. And I wanna thank you all. I always say it, but sometimes the simple things bear repeating. Your time is your most valuable commodity that's what's in limited supply, and that's what we respect most. Yes, we ask for donations, this is a free service, but even more so, we ask that you spread the word. Tell fellow artists and friends about this, and in, in a way, that's how we grow our organization. At some point, we'll send around a big tall man to knock on your door and ask for money. No, we don't do that. We don't do that, that's on paper. So, okay. Welcome everybody. And I want to start with uh, Linda Abrams. Linda Abrams has been sending me images back and forth and I've enjoyed them. And this is her first uh, time joining our group. So welcome Linda, nice to see you and welcome. And feel free to just jump right in and uh, share and talk however you like, however you feel comfortable. Well, I don't know, you, you like a little of my background, I guess? Okay, um, I'm South African. I've been living in New York area. I live in Long Island about almost 40 years. And um, my background's fine art and sculpture. And I stumbled into photography. I was a horrible photographer. And I used to use my pictures as a relation to drawing, you know, and creating stuff. And I've become a really accomplished, hopefully, decent photographer and I've started 
using my art background to manipulate and make my art, my, my photographs more painterly. So to, to distinguish myself from, there's so many, with today's cameras, there's so many people that can take good pictures. So to bring a little of me into it. So when I came here, um, you know, I had come from sculpting and uh, doing huge ceramics and drawing and this and that. And I actually wanted to go and teach at the local art center. And they looked at my, my South African degree and they went, Ooh, you know, you have to go back to school. It's not valid here. I thought, all right, well, I have to become more resourceful. And I started doing, you know, like big sculptures, ceramic sculptures and selling my stuff. You know, fortunately a decorator got hold of me and I used to sell my stuff all over, but I've unfortunately had a, a history of um, severe orthopedic problems. I've been, you know, had fractured four vertebrae in my spine and I've had eight knee surgeries and all kinds of things. So I had to keep adjusting what I did. Then I couldn't do my sculpture and big ceramics anymore. So I started making jewelry. So I went from the jewelry, everything was still sculptural. And I, then I started doing, working on paper, you know, anything that I could stand and do. And then I fell into quilting, believe it or not. And um, I make art quilt, I made, I haven't made an art quilt in years, but I was very lucky my quilts, um, I got accepted as the art in the world. And I Sorry. Can you hear me? I, I can hear you. I'm sorry if, if anybody uh, has some background noise, do mute yourself. Uh, go ahead, Linda. So sorry. So my my I got accepted. They picked the top 50 art quilters in the world, and I was my stuff traveled for four years all over the to Japan and all over. And then I had a friend who always, and I own a travel agency too, <laughs> and. Um, she always would get me into my studio and she died. And since then I haven't been in my studio and made a quilt and I just focused on my photography. So I was very happy, anything with art circles, I'm now looking to get back more into my art and getting out of my, because I became so busy with my business and successful, unless now, of course, nobody's traveling. So I have the time to really focus on my art and any art group that I can be part of to feed my soul, I'm very grateful for. Linda, that's quite a background. You, you know, you mentioned ceramics, you mentioned photography, you mentioned quilting. I was going to ask how did the orthopedic problems influence, but obviously you had to go but it to did, Yeah, it did actually, it did. Um, yeah, because it limited me, you know, because I couldn't stand, you know, so I had to keep finding ways and it's still, you know, like I find the photography is good because I can lie on my computer and my laptop and fiddle and faddle and I don't have to stand anymore. So, my, you know, like I did before, although I miss it. The other day I picked up something. I said, oh, my God, I can't believe, you know, I've set myself up with the, in my we moved from my house where I had a really big, beautiful studio. Not that I don't have, but it's in the basement now and the light isn't good. So, you know, I have to use, I, you know, I could look out and see everything in my garden and now I, I can't. So I, I got myself a, a beautiful drafting table that I look outside on now and I'm going to begin from my lousy pictures. I'm going to begin doing, you know, drawings and, pa and painting and doing something. So. Would you, like, would you like to share some images? Either I what's can. I have you? to see now. What I work in series, is, which I'm sure you all do, and there's this incredible um, maple tree in my neighborhood that I must have taken over 500 pictures, different seasons, going in tight, and whatever. So I could share a few of those now. If I, how do I get my pictures on here? Um, what do I do? I have a folder. What do I do? You can uh, share screen. Okay. Thank you. And I so guess minimize. The do I drop it in? What do I do? You, if you share screen, um, a window will come up with many different options, yeah. and you choose share. the one. Choose oh. the one. There you go. Oh, yeah. Okay. And now. Thank you, Fran. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, 
but you don't want to share Zoom because you're uh, so now on that window. Don't close Zoom. that window. Click out of this. Right. Oh. That's so now, yes, yeah, so open the folder that you want to share. Okay. All right. So let's. There we go. Excellent. So this, I wanted to show you this afterwards. This is actually, I wanted to show you how I got to this. <laughs> But wow. this is what the kind of thing that I'm doing now. This, so it's more like a drawing or an etching. And pencil. Opening it up and photo. Can you see it? We can see the full image of a tree. Yes. Is that yes? Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. All right. So, but I don't know why I can't show it one in a row in a row. Okay. So, all right. So this is abstracting it now. It is going mm -hmm. in tight, and then it, I. I've had this, I had a new show, and it's printed on um, watercolor, the Hannah Manuel, like nice, wake, toothy. Uh, it looks, you know, people can't believe it's a photograph, but it, you know, it is. So oh, that's, that's a photograph? That's With a photograph. filters? That's a photograph. With a filter? And I just went in tight, and then I work in topaz and multiple layers of oh. black, yes, black and white. This is a different oh. view. But I showed these together as a diptych. Uh -huh. And yeah. what I actually am going to do is, they wouldn't give me a sample of the paper. I'm going to bring a little orange into it so that they, they relate. Mm. Both on the same paper. Um, this was what I wanted to begin with. This was the beginning of the tree. Oh, wow. So, that's so you do the manipulation in Photoshop? Photoshop. I bring it, I start in Lightroom. Mm -hmm. Then I go into Photoshop and, you know, refine if there's some, uh, a wire or something, I take it out. And then I go into Topaz and Topaz mm -hmm. has got different programs. Mm. And sometimes I'll isolate and just want to do a certain area. It just depends. It has the uh, <clears throat> line work like a Van Gogh. I tell you, it's the most, I go past it every day and it's in a different light. I, 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 I can't. I'm just mesmerized by it. Oh, the other picture. Yeah, oh, look at that. I want to show you the other one first. This one. Did I go to this one? This one, okay. Sorry. Don't know why I can't get it to run. So sometimes I just want the, the blackness showing through. This was at the beginning of fall. Wow. Nice colors. The colors are just beautiful. And then I just, you know, exaggerate certain things, of course, what, what, what appeals to me. And that's that. I showed that already. This is another. Oh, I don't know why this is so. There we go. Obviously, you're inspired by nature. And this may be a simplistic question. But tell me, what do you see in nature? Why are you looking to nature what is nature no nature it's just creation? everything it's not only nature next time i can do a series of random uh, captures of people you know like i'll it's anything that's that just catches my eye um just like i like to work mm. in many mediums because i find um i'm drawn to something for whatever the reason is i just need to do it and then i'll go on to the next thing and then come back i always find that that way i've always got some kind of inspiration mm when I feel that I'm a little, I always find something in something, because to me, there's always something. If you're looking for something, you're never going to find it. But if you're open to receive, I'm a yogi also, and I teach. And if you're open, it will be there. If you're looking and looking and looking, it's not going to come. It's just, if you're open, it's going to suddenly be there. I don't know if you can get that, but... <laughs> So I don't plan. I mean, but I do plan to go to this tree. I never know what I'm going to find. And it's always a, a beautiful surprise, you know, because the light is always different. And then it, when I come back, I have to do something with it, you know. So the one day I went, there was just all these things going on. And I decided, I think I may just do this in black and white. I'm not sure. What do you think? Hmm. Looks good as it is. You like it yeah. as it is? Yeah, I do, just... but I could see, consider, having seen your black and whites and your color, I could see it both ways. Yes, I mean, I'll try it as you, well. Mm -hmm. You could say it's an inf almost a like Jackson Pollock inf influence, but <laughs> Thank you. without the brush strokes. But I mean, it's it just the way you approached it would be 
I guess, what Jackson would expect. You see, I did do it in black and white, so I want to know now. You oh, can okay. Out of color. I'm in the yeah. color. Yeah, and this okay. one definitely well, the color. Good to know. Well, yeah. back to you always need a, I always like to get another pair of eyes and then maybe do something in the middle too. Mm -hmm. you know? No, it's it's good to engage people's thoughts. Um, of course. You have a very strong sense of line that I see, and sometimes black and white white helps bring it out, whereas the color um, can sort of complicate the composition. So right, I'm drawn to 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 to, to black and white lately. But like this, this should be the end piece. But I'm going to show it anyway. So this I did in the it mm. was yeah, which I, I which was the fall. And you'll see that we had some snow last year in the fall. Yeah, I mm. see the snow. So this was the end one, but I'm going to show you the color ones that I did. So what do you think? Highlight. Oh, wow. And you see I've manipulated. It's not just yeah. a photograph. Yeah. And it's also the paper. I print often like on, um, on canvas. So people think it's a painting. Mm. Mm. Well, Am myself, I when I look at it, I have to say, gee, you know, because I want it to look like that. No? I like very much what's going on in that tree behind. Isn't it? Oh, it's, that's the tree. I did it from a distance. Mm. I love that tree. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the light that it was coming, I mean, I exaggerated it a drop, but it, the light is always just so fascinating to me. How large oh, the foreground? The foreground is kind of repeated by that tree in the background, the lines. I mean, thanks. It's, um, sort of give you the distance, foreground, background, infinite. This was a, d a different angle where I went in closer. Oh. So you've got wow. a bigger thing of the tree. Linda, <laughs> print these out how large. Oh, wow. I could print it because I shoot raw, I could print them very large. Mm. How large? As large as I want. What? And then there's a there's a program called Gigapixel that that I can go really big if I wanted uh, to. Yeah, it's like you need the large pixels too. Yeah, but yeah. I, because I shoot raw, um, well, I, I, I'm able. I would, I'm able to blow it up big. Oh, well, how do you open a raw file? That's my problem. Oh, you have to have a you have to have the a program to open it up into. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> this was a tight version of that. I went in tight. Oh, oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. And my aim is to you know, which before COVID and whatever is the, to to have a a showing of them all together. It couldn't be on a virtual. Well, to go into a gallery and have a show, you know. Oh, uh, 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 right. The printer. Does anybody remember what that was? <laughs> I know. I know. It's so sad, huh? Although the galleries, I don't know, nobody's coming. I belong to, there's a photography gallery in, in Huntington. And I mean, uh, I don't know. She, they just opened. This I did in a different coloring. Tell me what you think. In black and white. That same picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you really get a different feel by how you either use the color, get this sort of sepia right. feel. Um, it's, I tend to like this. That's me. I don't know. Mm. What do you think? I like this one too. I it's like, like it. an aged print. Yeah. You know. Uh, I like so it I, too. I, 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 aged. An aged print. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like an aged etching. <laughs> sepia etching. Right. You know, I don't know if you want to see more. I mean, oh, let's let's see a few more, and then we'll move okay. on to yeah. another presenter. So this is another close close up. Hmm. Oh, I like. You have that. a great sense of color. You, there's no question about that. Oh, thank you. It really becomes much more abstract in that than the uh, than the ones where you can see the the ground and the right. Uh, it becomes it's it's. I find these much more interesting. These, I, I, that's, these are the ones I'm leaning towards. Yeah, I like that. I think just a smidge of color. 
Now, can I ask something really simplistic? I'm, I'm not a photographer. In, in, in some program that you have, could you go into this and also mechanically draw into it? Yes. Can you change yes. it by drawing? Well, I haven't done it, but you can. But you can. I'm waiting to get this Wirecom pen where you can. Yes. Mm -hmm. I bought the iPad because I wanted to do it. And I, I found it, I don't know, it's, it's too, I, it didn't feel fine enough for me, you know, because I draw. I'm, you know, my background, I just, I draw, you know, like in this I'm drawing, but it's not the same. Right. But well, you can, I, I want to combine it. You know, what I'm going to do is uh, like, I'm going to start printing and then working with my pen, different shades of pencil and crayons or something into my pieces. That's what I plan on doing. Hmm. My so, daughter uses a Wycom tablet and Right, pen. that's what I'm waiting to get. There's a mm -hmm. new one, I think, that's coming mm. up that I can actually draw on and not have it as a pad and then it's on the screen. Mm. Those other ones are very expensive. Some of the, there's, there's one you can get like a big screen, but those are mm. like a couple of thousand dollars. Mm. And so. what kind of a camera do you use? Well, I'm just about to get oh, a new wow. one. Uh, I've got a Canon SLR, a small light one, and I use a Tamron lens, which is, goes from 18 to, to 300. So, because I do a lot of wildlife too. Mm. And I love the, the ability to go tight, you know, and just about be on top of the thing and then find something in the distance to, to be able to photograph it as well. It's and odd, but so, somehow I think you get more depth in your black and white than you do in your color work. Like mm -hmm. this piece in particular, you can almost go in the little curls and you go back in space and then you come forward. Well, that's what I wanted to do. You know, I worked at that. Oh, hmm. it, it's working. Thank um, you. Very, yeah, infinite. It's wonderful. I, I, it means a lot, thanks. Tell me when you want me to stop. Let's show one more image. Okay. Let's this uh, is so like your up. colors, are they a reflection oh. of, I mean, your choice of colors, is that a reflection of living in South Africa compared to Not really. New York? Well, I don't know. Maybe you, you would see it as that. But, yeah. but if you look on the wall, this, this is one of my quilts that's been, I'll show you. This, can you. Can you see it? Oh, you, I don't know whether you can see you it. Could, um, you could okay. stop the screen share and okay, then, then show, show that. You. Yeah, that'd be better. Right. All right. This should be a red, red button. Yeah. But you want to stop screen share. It's maybe at the top of your screen. Right. Yeah. Red. Yeah. Why is, it? is that your photograph too? Yes. Is that yours? Yes. That's yes. wonderful. Oh, thank you. I really like that. Mm, yeah. Where do I stop screen or new share? No. Where do I go? It should be in red. It oh, stop. Oh, yeah, I've got it. There we Perfect. go. Perfect. Okay. So this is, I don't know, can you see it? Yes. That's a quilt. This is quite large. Wow. And it, all this, it's, it's silk that I dyed. Wow. And um, I don't know, I just visualize the space. It's called reflections, reflecting. And I, and I write, I write about my quilts. And it's about reflecting on light, reflecting on the shapes. Um, you have quite a lot of the uh, sort of reddish orange tones. Can you see? I mean, it's quite a lot of the orange tones or brownish tones. Yeah, they are. Yeah. And black. I wanted the That's stock. The color you uh, mm. face upon. Can you pull out so we can see the whole thing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Burnt sienna? Would that be the color of burnt sienna? Uh, I think sienna would be more brown, right? Yes. Okay. Nice use of positive and negative space there. Mm -hmm. um, nicely done. Thank you. That's what I, I wanted, you know. So thanks. Mm. I'm actually in my living room. <laughs> ah. Nice. So. Thank you, Linda. That was uh, fascinating. <laughs> and I think what we see is every artist brings something different. Of course. And, and you uh, did something, you know, and I'll show you my people next time if you want. You know, that I, I, I wouldn't, I never take post shots. 
And then I, I do that keep too. them very soft. I do most of them in black and white afterwards, you know, because I like the contrast. The contrast and the softness and the kind of mystery, you know. Very nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Very great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Su Susan, shall we jump to you? Because I know you said you wanted to leave early. Are you well, about seven o'clock. So, I mean, there's still a little time, but sure, I'll start. I mean, I hope to present within 15 minutes. That sounds great. And then we'll move to you, uh, uh, Maria Kazoon, okay? Okay. Okay. Well, I go, to, I mean, I've been, um, I guess I started out as a photographer. Well, actually, I started out in Chinatown as an activist <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, because it was hard to get work besides laundry men, uh, laundry, restaurant work, or garment work. So trying, in, I graduated college uh, studying as a majoring in art history because it was easier to memorize slides and the history of artists <laughs> than um, than try to be an artist I guess or draw or paint or do those skills so after college I did get a job working for the city learning how to do charts graphs and all that graphic art stuff and then, uh, and then also as an activist in Chinatown, um, I became an art administrator. In those days, there was no such thing as that, but I managed to, um, well, I guess instigate some trouble in Chinatown, but it was worth it. <laughs> uh, tell, tell us about I get rid of gangs, okay? <laughs> tell us about the trouble, Susan. The, the gang problems in Chinatown and then the English languages that like all the women don't learn and you know to be more progressive in in um, working class situation so um, so then after being an activist because there is no money in it <laughs> <laughs> I um, I looked for work and so I became a typesetter for 20 freelance typesetter it was very more lucrative uh, to pay rent and bills and everything else to survive. So then finally, oh uh, yeah, so I had saved money and then I traveled as a photographer like to Morocco, the Philippines, China twice, India, North India twice. And as a photographer, I got tired of still lives. So I went into video which is a lot more moving images and it's a whole other world. So that I've been documenting Lower East Side jazz musicians, alternative jazz. In the meantime, keeping an eye on Chinatown's pro progress and, you know, and anyway. Um, so, um, so I have about 20 years plus of tapes and um, I guess so uh, pro um, documenting a uh, nonprofit organization, community arts organization in um, Lower East Side called the Gathering of the Tribes, plus then going to open mics, poetry. So I've been trying to combine whatever my art skills are needed also. The and, gathering, uh, gathering of the Tribes, didn't Robert Store uh, curate a show there. Isn't that this place with the blind curator as well? Yeah, 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 Steve Cannon, which is a sort of a joke, but there were some great artists that passed yes. through there. Yes, and, that, was and, an, that is an important place from what I remember. Right, but because everything is different now, it's changed. I mean, over gentrification that's occurred, and so uh, anyway, it becomes an archival thing. But and then during that time, also in the 80s or 90s, I, I found Minerva Drawing Studio. So I've been doing that almost every week, once a week. So this is, so I have lots of sketches. I mean, I'm, I improve, I want to improve my drawing skill and not, I, I, I refuse to do like 
illustrator, you know, the automation stuff. I, I mean, I'll edit on a computer for videos and images, moving images and photograph whatever I like. I mean, but I'm not traveling. So anyway, these are one minute sketches, a book that I've been doing and uh, what are they, about 10, 20 poses on that. So, you know, and there's a series where you start with one minute, then you go to two minute, five minute, and I got into watercolor. And I tell all the artists, you know, with pencil drawings and stuff, never erase, just go over it, go over, over it. And eventually your brain gets to get that shape that you want in the figure. And so, I mean, give, it's us, give us a little bit longer to see the image, just oh. a little longer. I know. You're giving us three minutes, three seconds. Well, look, time. I have about how many books of this, and they're a hundred page, and if I go, what? page by page, you already see, I mean, you know, I'm still trying refining my art style and technique and composition and material. And so I'm up to the level of uh, reed pen and the black ink, you know, ch Chinese or Japanese, <laughs> kind of sumai, sumi, you know, ink. So the read pen is like learning to use dip and dip and draw a line, dip and draw a line. So you have to, um, I mean, so because the ink wears down quite quickly on in the pen, and then the material I'm using is the Canon Sketch, which is like kind of, you know, this the paper's great too for watercolor, and so you know. I haven't, okay, this is probably a five minute drawing where you have time to mix color on the body. I think, I, I think part of the idea about doing uh, quick sketches, when I studied at RISD, we started with three second, five second, 10 second. It, it gets you to bring your energy into oh. the work. And then by the time you're doing a two minute, you know, if you bring all that energy that you had in a five second gestural drawing, right? I like to say your brain moves faster than you can think. And then you tap into something very deep and you're not oh. reflective, but it's just sort of, it's sort of happening. Oh, that's the training, huh? Yeah, okay. Cause I didn't, like Minerva Studio, she lets you go according to your, according to your pace. So I don't know. I mean, she had a, a guy from Bozart give a lecture, a Moroccan guy give a lecture, how he learned. And so like he, because of the anatomy of, in the Bozart, I mean, he could do a 30 second drawing to full body and just marvelous. And mm -hmm. I'm not at that level because <laughs> it's always one minute. The maximum I can do, this will be a 20 minute. Mm -hmm. So I get the full image without erasing and things like that. So, so is Minerva still, uh, is Minerva currently holding the drawing studio? Yeah. Uh, there... Yeah, she, um, she's having Tuesday, I think Thursday and Saturday, Friday and Saturday. I mean, you can look on her website. Okay. Spring studio and the whole schedule because she keeps up with uh, emails too. Like, yeah, yeah. Even in in today's you know pandemic distancing. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's ten people at least for those. But then uh, Saturday afternoon, twelve o'clock. It's a free. She don't charge because it's outside with people with clothes. Uh -huh. you know, mm. models that she hires, but okay. she's been getting dependent upon donations a lot because she's been around for 25 plus years, yeah. maybe, sure. you know, that helps a bit in getting, so she just last Thank week you. or two weeks ago, she celebrated her birthday. So, okay. So you get a general idea of like how I do my 
working colors and and try to um, there's an advantage as well, Susan, to not erasing. When you don't erase, you get to see the progression of the work. And also, when you get one line next to another that's a refinement, it helps to round the form and give you a three-dimensionality. And if you look at wow. Matisse's work, often the, some of it's half erased, and that half erased part is as important, especially in the dance, the hand. Oh. It's very important, and it helps activate and move the figure as opposed to just one perfect line, like in maybe a Picasso uh, outline. Oh well, yeah, I mean, sometimes I try to use the wash with the ink. So like, you know, just beginning with that. And then basically, I mean, I'm just fo with the dip and stuff, try to focus on the line. But then you get used, to, oh, there's so many little details with the repin, how to get the broad line, the straight line, and then go whisk, and then you get the line you want, and stuff like that. But I'm just so meticulous. That's the whole problem with me, trying to get the right, the line, follow the body contours, basically, developed all that. So, Susan, Susan, are those the same, the same model on each page? No, every week, well, I mean, I when mean, you get to the 10 fast, that's a different model each time. I mean, you know, until you get the one single color image, that's the 20 minute, then the session's over with. But the, so multiple, how, the multiple figures you have, like the two figures you have on the page, that's the that's same the model. 10 minute, yeah. That right. would be the 10 you know, you're, they're really very beautiful. Mm. Uh, yeah. They so, really so, are. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's... It's been a lot of years doing this, I mean, you know, and, um, you know, because uh, it's hard to, well, it's hard to travel and take photographs now. I mean, you know, but since I'm stuck in New York, I mean, this is why I, I say, like, if I was out in the country, I'd be drawing trees like this. Or is whatever. that watercolor or ink? Watercolor with the black ink line drawing. Yeah, they're, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I have to learn how to do without the lines. Oh, hold that, one, like up. That. Hold that one up a little bit longer. The oh. one, yeah, the well, one. there's messy feet there and all mm -hmm. that background's all messy, but I kind of like it like that. Yes, yes. I love it like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 the splotchiness, you know, and trying to get whatever. We are usually our, our worst critics. Stop huh? it. Huh? We are usually our worst critics. Oh. You don't need to be. I know. Yes, you know, Lawrence. Exactly. This is a frustration. Like, okay, how you fit how many people here? I mean, one figure in saving paper. So it's large and, and small. You know. Yeah, but you get a great composition by doing that, by sort of pushing the figures together. It's right. more than just okay. one plus one equals two in the combined right, right. form. I've gotten that once or twice, where, you know, two figures, and then all of a sudden there's another one in the middle that I didn't know about. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, what, that's the level. And then sometimes it's like, oh, six fingers. We're <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like you, so it's like go find the six fingers in the one hundred pages I have in my sketch pad, or whatever. But um, if you hold that one up again, hold that one up uh, again. I want to make a point when when uh, when you do a work like that, when you look at the contour, it's very important that the line changes thickness. When the line on the edge is thick and then thin, yeah. that starts to round the form as opposed to if all the outlines were similar thickness. You get so much dynamism from that thick to thin. And it's also not very easy to just work in outline and contour and get a sense of three-dimensionality, but you, you certainly do. And it takes quite a deft hand to be able to do that. Wow. Yeah, but yeah, it was just twist and turn on that reed pen. And then you could tell where my stops are. You know, the thickness of the ink held here, here, and 
then all of a sudden becomes blotchy because they got to turn the page. And what kind but of it, work, it works to an expressive advantage. It definitely does. It adds to the right. piece. Yeah, I like the blotches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Who's an well, kind of pen did you use? Hmm? Which pen did you use? It's it's like the Japanese reed pen. The sumi, the sumi pen. Yeah, I guess you call it that. I mean, let me go get the pen. You see, it's called reed pen. What's it called? I want to get one. She called it a reed pen. Reed. Reed, I mean, like R-E-E-D. I, -E -E I love to draw. That's my, and, and I love people, believe it or not. That's my thing. Reed pen, R-E-E-D? Yeah. And this one has two sides. It's like a, ba no. it's like a bamboo pen, right? Yeah, yeah. You yeah. have to dip it in ink? Yeah. Oh, you dip it? Yes. Okay. Traditional. You. you get this at Blick. And you can find right next to this, you get, you see these little, these pens, they're reed. I mean, these are all dirty, it's covered. It's like a feather pen, you know, the ancient days of like feather. Like a quill, like, like a quill. quill, quill, quill but that, oh, it's you, like you bamboo. Have it's the bamboo pen. As, as huh? the other one. Well, yeah, one's thicker. I mean, I guess I could sharpen them with on the cement, you know, like, you know, get a right. box there. But I'm so lazy. This one has a little brush to it. Oh, where did but you get them? It's falling off, huh? Where did you get it? Dick Blick or what? Blick, yeah. Blick. Blick, Blick might have them. Um, yeah, so this is, in, in so like, you know, you, you dip and then you draw and then <laughs> turn <laughs> that way. So I mean, it, it yeah. So I just Thanks. what this is the latest one. This one is um, I mean I got it on water. I got watercolor paper, sort of smooth surface. So this one is the last one I did this week. Oh, mm. yeah. That's that's like forty minutes. To 20 minutes, so yeah. By the way, she's you can pin model. her video while she's on. You can huh? pin her video and make it larger. If you hit the three dots, there's usually a way to do that. Oh, oh I'm sorry, yeah. Oh, oh sure. I'm telling uh, the viewers, and you can also go to yeah. speaker view if you want to highlight her screen. That's beautifully done, the coloration on the inside. Very yeah. nice. Yeah, she's good. Well, I always get the eyes kind of like crooked. But... Well, to Lawrence's point, we are our worst critic. Your eyes are good that they are offline. It sort of adds to something. Uh, but artists have a tendency to do that where they point out the mistakes, which, of course, <laughs> the viewer is not seeing at all. You should know that. We, we, I don't see uh, that. As yeah, I fooled you. <laughs> I mean, I started as a cubist, and then I got into realism. <laughs> very nice, Susan. Thank you very much. That was uh, very nice. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Nice presentation. Right. Um, okay. Thanks. Thank you. Um, we're going to move on, and somebody new, uh, Mariah Kazoon. Hi, Mariah. How are you? Hi, everyone. Am I pronouncing your name yeah. right? It's Maria. Maria, I'm sorry. And Mario, where are you from right now? Where, where are you? And tell us a little bit about your history and then feel free to go ahead and talk about anything you like, of course. Okay. Uh, so I'm a Lebanese Canadian installation performance artist. I graduated from the Lebanese American University in 2000 in the interior design and interior architecture. Then I moved to New York in 2001 and did my MFA at SVA. And I moved to Venice in 2006, and I have been living there and working there ever since. And um, so what I make in my art is um, interdisciplinary. I did, um, I started by making jewelry, then I, um, I had neck problems and body problems. So I moved to large scale sculpture where I had to move around them and not stay still in the same position. So um, every work that I make has a, you know, narrative, a story deriving from my personal journey, from my childhood memories and my cultural background. 
I like exploring and playing with concept of time and space by blurring their boundaries. And um, I make, um, how do you say, unconscious collective imagery references in my work. So um, uh, I create parallel worlds that explore the macro and the micro, the extremely beautiful versus the extremely repugnant and ugly. And uh, through my work, I tend to, how do you say, tame the darkness and give it a soft friendly appearance. Um, each, each of my installations is like a diorama, a segment of world. And um, the materials I use are, you know, a variety of, I, mean, I use a variety of different materials like fabric, bamboo, uh, glass, plastic, anything that is lightweight, that is uh, friendly to my body. And um, I like to transform them, make them dialogue with each other and give them nobility and new life and meaning. So most of my pieces are site specific and are an open, uh, have an open structure. I can endlessly keep on building on them depending on the size and you know, whatever site I have. So I thought I would introduce my work to you by showing you a selection of works, the earlier ones and more recent ones. I prepared a small PowerPoint presentation um, I think I want to, how do you say, share this, the screen. Mm -hmm. So, wait. Is it working? Yes? Yes. Okay. Yeah, looks good. So here, this is a um, self-portrait installation performance piece. Um, I started when I was living in New York. And it's made of a shiny black fabric and stuffing. The forms looks menacing and root-like insect, yet they are comforting and seductive. Um, they look like, you know, stuffed pillows, you know, making it okay to be in bed cuddling with a monster-like creature. Um, my work later developed and grew, and um, this, piece, this piece, depending on the different venues, um, it would change and I would, um, add more elements. Um, I made the costume to be a part of it myself. Um, each, each, uh, each venue, I would show it differently. I would um, add more Myra, elements. Myra, uh, are, you, Myra yes. are, you, are you using any dream imagery? Anything from your dreams? I think um, from my, you know, I used to read a lot of uh, children's book, you know, uh, a watch watch movies. Um, I'm very much inspired by this movie called uh, Donkey Skin, um, who uh, the, Catherine Deneuve was a um, main actress. Um, uh, and it was filled with imagery and uh, this movie uh, stayed with me during my childhood, you know, and accompanied me through my uh, <laughs> later on with my art making. It, I always remember this movie and uh, the way the magical world that uh, Jacques Rémy, the, the, the producer had done, you know, so here, take a, I look at, take a look at the work of Edward Gorey. Edward uh, Gorey? Yeah, G-O-R-E-Y. I think you'd find it very interesting. Not so much for this piece, but the black pieces. The black pieces. Yeah. I made several black, black pieces. I'm not going to show you all of them. I'm going to just show you, how do you say, um, a selection of different works chronologically, so you have an idea of what kind of... Uh, uh, what kind of work I made through the years. So this one here, the, the slide that you're seeing is I translated those pieces in, in glass. I had the chance to work in a glass blowing factory here in Murano. Uh, and so these are uh, blown glass and uh, with a, a mirror paint inside. Yeah, I was going to ask you, that's gorgeous. Thank you. Yes. So this is me with the glass pieces and the fabric pieces. Mm. Mm. This is another place. This was in Beirut. Do you sketch too? Yes, I make drawings. I make photo work, um, some videos also of, of, of the installation of the, how do you say, the segment of time while the performance is happening. Um, like it looks like an ink block. Yes. Yeah. yes. This, is, this is like Edward Gorey meets Carol Walker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I see that. 
Gory's kind of a cartoon. On, right? on acid. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. uh, here I am performing operations on a fabric piece. So during the performance, I would be sewing and closing up wounds. You know, during so you the- You do all your own sewing, Maria. I love sewing. It's what I, you know, it's what I do best. It's, um, I, f I, I, f I feel that, you know, with fabric, you can, you can go wild. It's, you can do, do huge works and tiny, tiny works. And the work is still light. I can still carry it myself and handle it myself, you know. Right. And, uh, it's soft. So you and do it by hand or by machine? Both. Both. I use both. And you stuff them. What's I stuff them. And this is remnant because I remember when I was small, um, when I, I, I lived through the war years in Beirut and uh, I remember I used to hide my dolls whenever I used to hear, how do you say, the, 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 the noise of bombs coming closer. I used to run and hide the precious things I have and stuff them and the, so that nobody would find them, you know, before running away, to, running to the, to the shelter. So I think I carry this from back then. So I stuff. I like stuffing. <laughs> so, do you know the do you know the Barangos Glass Studio in Murano? I'm actually I'm actually married to Adriano. If you know him. <laughs> <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> All right. Okay. Next time we come to Venice, we come in there. Just come and right? visit. Absolutely. Say hello for me. Say hello for me. Okay. <laughs> oh. And Mara, you did say you're speaking to us from Venice, Italy? Yes, it's midnight here. I'm speaking to you from my bedroom. Oh, how did you find it? This is so fascinating. Huh? How did you find this group? That's so wonderful. I actually, I posted a picture on Facebook and, and, and Barry contacted me. So. Oh, like, like with me, the same way. <laughs> <laughs> it makes the and world small and Absolutely. wonderful. Absolutely, you know? So I transformed the bedroom and the studios ever since the lockdown here started. So I could stay with the kids that have been away from school for a while. So, yeah. Wow, this is <laughs> so situation. exciting. Yeah. So here, Golly. this is in Miami, at um, in downtown Miami, Marriott Marquis, during Art Basel, Basel in 2009. It's an extension of the same work. You know, it's, it keeps growing. Um, are, you, are you a big fan of Giacometti's work? Yes. I could, there's that one piece that he does that it almost looks like a, uh, a figure lying down with the skeleton exposed. Yes, your work, yes. <laughs> your work, your work mm. reminds me of that. Um, you're, do you consider yourself a surrealist? Mm, no, not really. Not really. Okay. It's a combination, you know. I tell you, people, uh, the work I look up to, you know, I like, I love the work of uh, you know, Eva Hess, um, Asian artist, um, uh, Lee Bull, she's Korean, um, Lin Tian Yao, a uh, Chinese artist, Annette Messager and Louise Bourgeois, of course, yeah. Peter Coyne. Sarah Z, you know, these are my, how do you say, idols. Mm -hmm. So here I would, um, these pieces here that the, the performers would carry them, hand them to anybody from the public to carry them around and give it back and put it back on the site of the installation. <laughs> you activate, you actually sort of activate the space like that and the, it's your sense of performance. You bring the, uh, the viewer live, so to speak. Yes, it's like, you know, what is reality and what is, you know, uh, the unconscious is, it's like, you, what is, what is real, what is not real, it's putting both together, you know, blurring the line. Have you ever gotten a really negative response because there's kind of frightening yes. images? Yeah. Depending on, on the where I show the people, same piece. What have people images. said? So this piece has been, you know, it's been... The, my my work has been really well accept been well accepted in in the U.S. But the same piece, one piece I showed in the U.S. and I showed in Poland. And in Poland, I people run after me and they want to kick me out of the spaces where I was. <laughs> so so hmm. depending depending on on which country and the culture, you know, it's very interesting. I think. Yes. How, how people you know react to the same piece. That's you, right? In your. Uh, here, no, this is not me. This is another person. Uh, uh, 
so I'm usually in part of it and I will show you when I start to include people um, other people so this one is small video here where it's me inside Very rich and deep work, definitely. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh wow. Well. <laughs> okay, so this one, this one here, it's uh, entitled The Ignorant Skin. It was a site-specific word made for a solo show in the Venice Biennial back in 2005. It was the first time I collaborated with a group of people. Here, I wanted to make a skin-like 3D relief fresco, and I had a very uh, large exhibition site. So I wanted to create an installation that would embrace the audience, almost overwhelming it, and create an emotional confrontation. So uh, I made this very large-scale piece that is about 13 meters um, uh, wide and three meters high and it was made of different kinds of fabrics stitched and glued together it had uh, lots of detail work in terms of stuff in different areas and sewing in beads and thread I had the help of art students from the art academy here in Venice there were around 50 students working on on this to complete it and three of the 50 students who uh, came and gave me a hand um, at that time, um, really felt connected to the piece, so I included them in the piece. Uh, I made costume with the materials I used on the main work. So they really embodied the work um, really well. They, become, they oh, became brilliant. really part of it, like moving, making movements, uh, very slow movements. Mm -hmm. It was my first collaboration uh, for mm -hmm. a performance with other people. Um, I didn't really, um, I improvise, I don't really plan what they do in the performance, I just let them embody the costumes and, and listen to the work and what they want to, what it wants to say. So it, it was all really instinctive. And the result was a living fresco coming out from Dante's Inferno. <laughs> yeah. so. Love it. Here, small, just very short video. They would sleep in it and it would be, uh, the performance would last Three hours, four hours, five hours, depending. This reminds me of your work, Linda, because of its emphasis on line and the color, the earthy colors. I sort of a, I love it. And it's funny, you know, because you haven't seen my quilts. You saw the one, but you haven't yes, seen Yes, yes. Next time I'll show There's you. There's a some. big connection, I think. Hmm. Love it. I love the stuffing because I like, and, and that's why I got drawn into quilting because mm. I, um, I have a piece that one piece that's been traveled all over um, that I stuffed. I made a figure of myself on the move when I recovered from my last surgery and I made a piece called on the move and it's 52 by 52, not as big as your pieces, but it was a really gigantic piece for me to, to make mm. on my own. And to yeah, quilt, there's and to a connection. Stuff, you know, and the stuffing is 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 hard work, <laughs> right? It's very hard work. The sewing and the stuff. Here, this piece here, it's called um, "They Were There," and um, I made this in 2011. The piece is about global warming and climate change, destruction and reconstruction. Mm -hmm. uh, the narrative or story I create and I write for this work is that there's a frozen segment of landscape, a melting frozen lake, and its ice is breaking because of climate change. You have strange ice, snow, and creature uh, that are appearing. So the, 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 the piece is made of uh, millions of glass, small glass material elements that are glued together. You know. I, can see, I can see why you like Sarah C, but at the yeah. same time, I know you're, you're finding this form yourself 
and then you're liking other artists who have found it as opposed to looking at other artists' work and sort of copying or riffing on it. You've mm. come to all of this yourself. And yes. by the way, this is incredibly deep work, incredibly Bef moving. Before going into art school, I had never, uh, how you say, I had never really known about these other artists. You know, I just. Did, did you go to school with Sarah Z? Yes, she was my teacher at SVA. Oh. Yeah, and uh, she represented um, the U.S. in the Venice Biennial in 2013 when I was in the Venetian Pavilion. Well, so, this figure inside, what is it? Is it stuffed with fabric as well? This is human. This is oh, that's human. a human. Oh, okay. yeah, that's yeah. a human. Are they? Oh, yeah. 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 Well, they, they go <laughs> here. So I've been working with these two um, uh, performers uh, since 2005. Uh, one is a professional tailor, and the other one is a um, dancer, performer, um, concept creator also. So they really embody Amazing. well my work, yeah. It's, a, it's been a... Amazing. So, so you have uh, here, you have in this area, uh, glass leftovers, uh, industrial glass, Murano glass leftovers, all kinds of glass. So. We, we don't hear too much about artists from Lebanon. How do you think yeah. your culture influenced your work? I mean, you, you know what happened? I don't know if you've heard that, but there had been a big explosion um, uh, maybe two months ago in, in Beirut port. Yes, of course, and, we heard about it. And so uh, a friend of mine sent me a picture of the broken glass and a mattress. It looked exactly like mm. this piece. So I come to realize my aesthetic is drawn from an or organized destruction, you know, it's background, the yeah. background, mm -hmm. the aesthetic comes from there. I think we don't realize it, but subconsciously it comes up. Yes. Yeah. So it's destruction, reconstruction, you know, it's very correct. The culture there is, is immediately you, you clean up and you rebuild immediately. You know? mm -hmm. So I also develop uh, a series of pictures and images out of each big installation I make. Um, so here you have a kind of landscape, you know, almost like right. frozen landscape. Beautiful. You see the creature here coming mm -hmm. out from the... Yeah. So this was, I showed this piece in What the is the creature? Day. Huh? This one is glass leftover. I learned how to make the, the, the leftovers that the glass blower make. Uh, and it drops on the floor. I, I learned how to make it and, and, and get some more because it was not enough to look through the dumpster. So how did you put it together? Did you, did you glue it? I glued it with Elmer's glue. Okay. Elmer's glue <laughs> <laughs> works here. It's simple, right? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing beats it, you know? Not even UV glue for glass or anything. So, right. Yeah. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Isn't it dangerous? I mean, you could cut yourself pretty easily, right? Yes, but you know, the more you work with the material, uh, I how do you say? Yeah. It, it, it starts bending to whatever you ask it to do. Did you work with tweezers? No, I just work with my hands. Wow. At first, at the beginning, I start, I cut myself, but then at the end, you don't, you, you, you learn how to manipulate the material, and the material, it's kind of a relationship you build. It's a, how much, um, who is stronger to, 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 to send a message. So, mm. so this, the same piece has been shown in an art fair. This was Art Dubai in 2012, shown with the Lebanese gallery. So it was interesting to see the piece shown in a different way and installed differently. Here, this is a... And now I see him moving. Before it, was, it wasn't moving, now you could no, see. this is a small video. And they're there for how long? Forever. <laughs> Forever. <Yeah. laughs> so the, the deal is, how uh, you say, they take a break every two hours. Yeah, so. <laughs> wow. So sometimes we're all together, sometimes it's one, sometimes two, depending on the needs of the piece and what it is. So this work here, the next one, is, came before the other one, but I thought it would make more sense to show it after this one. It's called Habitat, where he came from. This was made in 2009. And um, it's a, 
I create I made up this creature called Momos, a motherly moth. Is the bottom part here of the piece is like um, um, made with tissue paper and uh, uh, water bottles, and the, the base is made of drawing and painting, and the top the the, the top part is made of uh, Pyrex balls. It's a very light glass um, that I I hang to the fish line. So the glass balls that you see are made like molecules. They're single, double, and triple elements. And some went through an iridation process to make them look like rainbow. Others are crystal color. They're handmade. They are slipped and on thick fishing line. They're held with beads and transparent handmade plastic washers that made, a trans made with from transparent water bottles. So those two snow performers are supposed to be the extension of the creatures that has a story and that inhabits the space. The two performers make sound with the balls and they are searching for their breakfast in this cold icy landscape. In my narrative, they are trying to find the dried fish for breakfast. So the piece is a comment on global warming. Also, you can see the work as this cold landscape that is bursting with bubbles under pressure here. So the costumes are made with recyclable trash bags. So you see you have the drawing on the bottom of the base and acrylic. I love the reflections coming through the bubbles. Yeah. I think at the best, as artists, we create our own worlds. And there's no yeah. question that you have created a world in here. Just think of where all of we are right now in terms of our thoughts. And you yeah. have taken us all away from everything that is fleeting <laughs> and that the news. And we are totally wrapped up in a world that you have created. Mm. That, you know, yes, it comes oh, to this world, but you have, you've really been no, so I, uh, amazing. I wanted to make it as, you know, I thought if I needed to. And we're cool. It's fine. Beautiful. I just lost it. Bravo. Gorgeous. Mm. These are the two same performers that you saw before, also, the other work. Mm. Are, you are you familiar with Totland's tower that he did? You have that structure, and I've seen other artists come at it where you, you use... What's his name? Totland, T-A-T-L-I-N. T-A-T-L-I-N. Yeah, he, uh, he did a structure, and you're coming at it because you're... You're looking to build up, you're doing post and lintel, and you're going rectangular. Mm. He did something like that. And when artists do that, they don't necessarily reference, but it's fascinating. I've seen a few artists hit that form. And that's, yeah. you know, you also work in circular form and the combination of the bubble and those, you know, the verticals, the post and lintel work, and it can read like Bob Wire as well. I mean, you, I try to, how do you say, um, May put the contrast, the how do you say the architecture form with anthropomorphic shapes, organic shapes. Do you see here this kind of structure is ever, never ending? Out. It's almost it's it's. it's in a lot so what of is that pieces. made from, Maria? What have you made that from? Uh, oh. Balsa. It's a do you know the thin wood that is used for architecture models? Also oh. wood. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So. Yeah. So this one here, this is this piece I made last year. It's called Alfard Gateway, okay? I tried to make um, a gateway based on a very luminous star um, called Alfard. Um, it's uh, the Hydra constellation, and uh, it has an Arabic name for solitary. It's a solitary star, and it's very luminous. So this was a sketch of the piece I made uh, here. Wait. And this is uh, the installation work I made after this drawing. Wow. Oof. Is that aluminum? Mm. What is that? What is that material? This one is fabric. It's fabric beads. Can you show the can you show the drawing again? Yes, just a second. Is that um what what, what is that? It's, it's pencil, ink on a, on golden paper. I just took a picture of it. I want it's it's pencil and ink. It's beautiful. On, uh, on gold paper? A colored pencil on golden paper. 
Uh, how large? Is, oh, 105. It's, um, this is A4 size, A4, A4, A4. So it's five, five letter size paper, two, two rows. Hmm. Wow. And I put magnet here, this one. Magnet? Uh, small, tiny magnet, so I don't make the hole. Uh -huh. Oh, this it's on a magnetic board? No, no. So you see this one? The small, I don't know if you see the curse, the, the, the arrow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So this one here, you put one behind with the glue. Uh, the, uh, or you put, you yeah. put a nail on the wall, and then on the front, you put this tiny one millimeter magnet. Yeah, yeah. I order yeah. from Amazon. The great trick. <laughs> yeah, so you don't make the hole in the paper, on the paper, or you don't use a tape. That's a great idea. Yeah, it's beautiful. So... This one. So I wanted to make a gateway through which it is possible to reach the essence of the human emotion, the raw emotion of life and reach the parallel worlds I build through my works, where darkness, anguish and fear are no longer so monstrous, but are governed, embodied by beauty and inhabited by soft and elegant figures. Mm. Okay. Wait, who's it? Are those stones or fabric? It's fabric. This, the things are fabric, right? Everything is fabric. Okay. So, here. And here is the most recent piece I made, uh, um, which, was, which is in a show in Venice here, where I explore the uncertainty of the times we're living in. And this is also made of um, glass blowing left over. The work invites the viewer to look up to space, as used to do the populations from ancient times. They look up to the sky to analyze their fate and their relation to the planets they were living on. Here you can see an extinct asteroid or celestial body that has arrived through Alfred Gateway, the previous installation. And here it is surrounded by people gathering around it. This installation is very different from my other pieces where life and living is very present through organisms and creatures and beings. Here in this work, everything looks static and narrates a life that is no longer there. So here, I show you some detail. I love the, the, the way the shadows fall. I show you the leftover here. I don't know if you can see it while I'm sharing the screen. Yes, yes. So this one. Hmm. Mariah, I want to try and get at uh, the background that gets you to such complicated work. Did you study philosophy? What is the non-art that you study that has influenced you? Is there some, you mentioned the film. Um, what, what else do you feel is I your- I fear, the fear. I'm afraid all the time. And it's fear, how, how, you, how do you live with fear? If I, could, if I didn't make this work, I would probably be on, on medication or something. <laughs> I am afraid. <laughs> it's part of your experience of being Lebanese through the civil, through the war. Maybe, maybe. I mean, it's not, not necessarily. I think all the populations go through terrible things, you know. It's mm. not only being Lebanese, but I live with existential fear. Fear, so... Mm -hmm. how do you and the more delicate and the more intricate things are the more the more the less i think about fear it's i this is the, the more you're know. absorbed yes so i was working the, with the tiny the invisible before when i was making jewelry but then i realized my body was <laughs> failing me because i would spend maybe 48 hours working without movement you know not i moving. know i did the same yeah, yeah. So I thought I would, I had, it has to change. So I still do detail work. Like here, I'm working on this new piece. So look at the detail work here. It's tiny, tiny, and it's huge at the same time. So mm. I have to move around it, work around it. What is that made of? It's bamboo. It's very uh -huh. light. Bamboo, glass beads. Uh -huh. so. It's hard to see because you're sharing the screen. So we're okay, looking at I'll show a tiny, later. tiny little box. Yeah. yeah. So. That oh, was so fascinating. Yes. Wow. So I, it's, I think this is one. These are the last pictures. How so are you I'm making just, these glass pieces? Are you, you're, you're, you're casting them? No, it's Elmer's glue. Ah. 
They're all one of a kind, right? <laughs> <laughs> so clear. I I work on here. I make them with them. How you say uh, with the sole? They're the one inside the shoe. I take. You mean the whole out. thing is Elmer's glue, or it's glass and Elmer's glue? No, no, it's glass. But the, oh. the it's glass left over. This right. one here. Uh huh. And I put them together with Elmer's glue. Ah, you know? okay. So now so do you have any pictures of uh, pictures, do you have any of? pictures of people wearing your jewelry? People wearing your jewelry. Uh, no, it looks I, so. I made, um, them, if, uh, I made them very long time ago. If you can wait, I can pull out some uh, jewelry. I have, I have some. I have very twenty-year-old pieces. If you can wait one second. Sure. We yeah. Can wait. Just yeah. a second. I, I just want to reiterate. Uh, Mariah is coming from Venice, Italy, and obviously a fascinating uh, presentation. Oh, she was wow. in the Venice Biennale, um, and you know she has created a world. And of course, she, you know glasswork. She she has tricked, sort of tricked the complexity of glass by using glue, which is Thanks. very smart. I will I exit the screen so I can show you. Right. So this one, I don't know if you can see it. Too close. I think you're holding. Yeah, it. sure. Yes. Yeah. Pull it back a little. So this one here. This is a ring. Beautiful. Oh, I love it. <laughs> it has antenna. So beautiful. It's all glass. This one is glass and guitar string. Oh. Interesting. Yeah. Wow, and I see in the macro micro because you almost see little yeah, constellations or you know galactic <laughs> spiral arms in there. No right. question about it. Do you play guitar? Um, no, I don't play. But I like the strings, they're very interesting. I tried to make them in gold, but it's not the same effect. You know? This is gold. Hold it for a Yeah, now we're not seeing you on the main screen. I'm seeing you in a little box. Yeah, well, you can make the box lar larger if you pin, pin her video. You can hold it by your face. That's probably the right bet. That's another ring. Yeah, this one is another ring. Here. See. Uh, hmm. But then I think the ones that are made with the strings are more interesting. You know? These were all done before? 20 all years ago, yes. So this one, you can make it, this is an earring. You can make it short and long by turning and twisting this one. It's an <coughs> extension. Mm. So, oh. so I made lots of accessories. I also made uh, bone handbags with a cow bone and uh, um, many different uh, places of, how do you say, different uh, areas of um, different bone type mm, so but so i this one is this is my background this is my i think i come from small small tiny tiny it is interesting wow thank the you, fantasy thank place <laughs> yep. wow that was wonderful thank you for sharing. Thank, thank you thank you thank you very oh this was great. thank you Beautiful. I love your jewelry too. Yeah. Great stuff. Great stuff. That was really beautiful. Thank you so much. Um, I do want to say, is there a, is Susan Starr here tonight? She was from Hawaii and she was going to uh, come on. I don't see her in. I just want to say, if you are here, we're going to push to next week because we have, you know, sort of done all our time. And I think we had three in-depth performances uh, three in-depth presentations by artists we haven't seen before, even though we did see uh, Susan Young once before. I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, as well, I think somebody does have uh, two connections going on now, so there's a reverberation going on. Yeah, yeah. Just the same, something new we're going to be doing we're going to start to have a virtual gallery as part of our website, the APO Ray. 
I'll give more details at the next Monday, and I'll start to put it on the website. I just want to thank all three performers tonight and everybody who came to listen. This was, uh, I think, every week we hit another new high or another expansion of what we're trying to do here. And it's you artists that are really doing all the work. We're just the glue, as in your glass, Mariah. We're the glue that brings it together. But you guys are the glass. You guys are the gold and the emeralds. And I can't thank you enough for coming and being a part. Spread the word. Uh, share with your friends. This was very transportive tonight. There's no question about it. Yeah. We, did, we did a pure good here. There's no doubt about it. And thank you. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you, Barry. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. Tonight, really special. Aloha from Hawaii. It was really great. That was beautiful. Thank yes. you. Yes. Thank, thank you. Barry. Thank you, Barry, for bringing together all these artists, for inviting yes. those special, magnificent women to join us tonight. Yes, I'm going to hear from my girlfriend, too, later. <laughs> <laughs> thank you barry this is great thank you see you next thank week so much thank you bye -bye. good night good night everybody good night everyone ciao 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 thank you linda thank you linda. oh thank you so much this was wonderful thanks was wonderful join us again join us i again. will i will